On amongst the fans, ah, a Rossi Angel would be called that, wandering around as so many of the 46 fans here at Mount Panorama soaking up this really international event that comes here now and it's growing in its stature every year we come back and the friendly pole shootout less than an hour away here as the Group S cars are on the track, something from yesteryear and a whole mixture of cars from Porsches to Alfa Romeos but not Chaz Mostert. I welcome Alex Webster from Porsche Cars Australia to the commentary. Man, it's not only race this, but heads up behind this Group S category. Welcome. Thanks, Matt. Great to be here this afternoon. And wow, hasn't Bathurst put on an afternoon for us? It looks lovely and uh, great for Group S to be here. What an atmosphere and what a field you guys have put on for us this weekend too. Yeah, thank you. It, uh, look, we're a little bit down on numbers that we uh, probably would have hoped. We were hoping to get sort of 50 cars here, but uh, I think uh, there was a number of cars that just didn't get finished in time. But all in all, we started with 36 cars and we've got about 31 starting this race three. So this race three is based on the qualifying result held earlier in the weekend. We've had two races, Terry Lawler and Jeff Morgan. The Jeff Morgan that raced in Porsche Company years ago, still racing in his 70s and loving life out there. He'll start on the front row for this final race. We had two reverse top 10 races and the drivers loved it. We certainly did too. Yeah, look, all our drivers absolutely love coming back to Bathurst. I mean, who wouldn't? It's the pinnacle of uh, Australian motorsport. And to be able to do it in your old classic love, uh, in your old car, it's uh, the best thing ever. This is my third trip here for the 12. I've come here for the 1,000 since the late 90s, but seeing this event grow, that is the biggest I've seen it down there in the pits in the last three years. And there's fans everywhere. They've been here since Thursday with a track to town. And of course, Friday practice, there was so much track time yesterday. We had the threat of storms. They never eventuated. We had a nasty one go around us here earlier today, but quite hot and humid conditions out there right now. Yeah, the drivers have certainly been feeling the heat. A few of the guys are running cool suits, but I can tell you most of them aren't. And after eight or nine laps in an old car with no ventilation, then uh, you're pretty warm. There's a man that knows how to do a few laps around here, Craig Lowndes. Tom Randall in the centre. Cam Waters on the outside of that group has been stunning the sprint car world. Cam Waters in the last few weeks with the Classic down at Warrnambool and the Aussie title in the last couple of weeks. Supercars kick off next weekend here as well. If you're not in the area, get up here for the next few days and be part of Superfest. Because the 5500 is here next weekend to start off another chapter of the Repco Supercars Championship. The field are in line. Terry Lawler on your right-hand side and Jeff Morgan in car 41. The Porsche 911 has got Doug Barber behind. Purvis writes uh, Wayne Potts, who turns 40 here today, looking to celebrate his birthday in style. As the revs come up, watch for the front two guys to go off on their own as they've done the last two races. Lola and Morgan underway for the final race of Group S here as we build up to the Morelli Pole shootout. And side by side on the way now to turn number one, Terry Lawler is going to lead just to battle the Porsches behind. Yes, Terry's uh, got the big long legs of the Shelby to get him up mountain straight, and then you've got a gaggle of Porsches there. Jeff Morgan, Doug Barber, and then Andy Purvis behind, and then a couple of things different. You've got Spencer Rice in the 2000cc Alfa Romeo, and uh, then Wayne Potts in his Datsun 280Z. Now, for the last two races, both Morgan and Lawler have had to start from the fifth row, punished for being on the front row in qualifying, and now watch Terry Lawler disappear. But don't panic, there's a lot of class racing that goes on here. There is. We've got three different categories within Group S, predominantly based on gears, so the 50s, 60s and 70s, and so there's lots of races within this race, uh, as it is with all our other races and uh, meets throughout the year, of which there's about 11. Lots of MGs and Alfa Romeos out there as well. Tony, oh, it's been a crash in the background oh, of that shot. Oh, it's In the background, it's windscreen has folded down on one of the Porsches. That's all the way up through the shelf, and that's stopped half the field going through. That's Andrew Whiteside in, uh, I hope he's OK, and uh, you can see he has a right match. The windscreen has been caved in there. That's terrible. He's looking to probably pull that car over to the left-hand side, and the field just taking it nice and easy across the top of the mountain here on the first lap. Well, Terry Lawler was already out to five seconds. I don't expect we're going to see much of him now for the rest of the field as he powers down in this beautiful Shelby GT350 Mustang. Morgan runs in second. Doug Barber having his best run the weekend up there in third. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, that's a shame for Andrew. He's been having a great weekend. He was on the front row in race two, and uh, he was just saying to me just before this race how much he's enjoyed his weekend. So that's that's a real shame that, uh, that that's happened. There's Wayne Potts in the background, the Datsun 280Z. 
it's just such a wide range of cars. And he said, may not be the biggest field you've had, but there's so many of these cars around the country now. There is. We've got about 120 active members. So last year, 120 cars competed in 11 different uh, race meetings, predominantly in you know, historics. And as you said, there's lots of different bakes. There's lots of variety. I think at last count, we had 12 different manufacturers on the grid. So uh, it's, it's a really good, diverse grid. For the field making their way down the chase for the first time, they'll need to be mindful of that clean-up material from the previous race in the combined sedans and still some remnants from that earlier incident today from this category with a bit of oil dumped down there in the final turn. Yeah, I might have put the commentator's curse on my good mate Tim Linus. He was coming down there and he's 928. And then uh, he's left his mark on Bathurst, but not in the way that he probably would have hoped. So Morgan, who runs in second spot, six seconds away from Terry Lawler now, who's just going to enjoy this Saturday cruise. There's Potts going through, and then a big margin after that scary incident up there on the climb up through the shelf. Lawler leads by nearly seven seconds from Morgan, Barber, Purvis, and Potts. The gap is six and a half seconds. Terry Lawler continues to lead in the third and final race of Group S, supporting the Repco Bathurst 12 hour here at Mount Panorama today. We look back through the field here, a wide range of cars, including the MGs. Look, MGs happen to be one of the most popular cars uh, for Group S because it's a great entry point. You've got little sprites like the one that's on there, David Badgens right there, Michael Rose in front of him in the red with the yellow across the bonnet. And those cars, along with some of the Alfa Romeos, that's a great entry for anybody, be it young uh, or old, to come into this, uh, the sport especially the historic one where you know, everyone's welcome. 72 model car, this one heading up through the cutting now. What is the oldest car? The question without notice. Uh, so Ron Goodman has got the oldest car that's still competing. That's a 1954 Porsche 356. Wow. Uh, he's not here this weekend, but he is sponsoring us, which we're very grateful for with his company exclusive bodywork. So uh, Ron does run that and runs it very hard, and he's not the back. He's, he's right up there. He's about pulling up legendary names. Ron Goodman, the Ron Goodman that ran NASCAR at the Thunderdome back in the days. And certainly knows how to wheel a race car around any track. So we watch the cars make their way across the top of Mount Panorama here. 14 minutes and change remaining. Group S supporting this weekend's event. A bit of a tip of the hat to the cars we see later on today in the Pirelli Pole shootout of where we've come from. Yeah, we think there's a nice link there between uh, obviously Porsches and uh, Ferraris and, uh, and Fords and Shelbys. There's lots of similarity between what we see back in the day to what we see uh, running around the track just shortly in the next session. The open face helmet of Terry Lawler, who's cut thousands of laps in his career, never turns out a bad looking race car and has driven a wide range of cars in his career too. He has, and he, he's wearing the number one. He won our President's Cup in 2023 and earned the right to wear number one, and this is his first event running the number one on the, the green Shelby. So uh, he travelled the most, he accumulated the most points and richly deserved, and we presented that to him uh, just last night at our presentations. What we did notice in the last couple of races is this car cuts it really fine with fuel. Has he gone too hard too soon here, or do you think he's running to a bit of a number now? Yeah, he might be. Certainly, he's got only five seconds over Morgan at the moment. He'd be conscious of that. As he said uh, earlier in the week, uh, on yesterday's race, he filled the car absolutely full to the brim. And as we saw, it was slightly longer that race. And he conked out going down Conrod. He managed to get it over the line, still in second. So he might be conscious of doing a bit of fuel saving. Car 155 has come to a stop down here. David Baker in the Corvette Stingray that's turning into what would be the campgrounds entrance here at Mount Panorama. He's out of harm's way. It looks like his weekend is done with 12 and a half minutes of racing still remaining. So keep an eye on what goes on with car one. He's running in the 237s. His pole time earlier this weekend was in the 232s. So maybe it backs up our claim. And he's just got a margin. We'll stay with that. And he continues to lead this one. On a beautiful Saturday afternoon, the storm clouds, they're disappearing away from here. The action continues from Mount Panorama. The Repco. Safety car on the circuit here. Incident at top of the mountain here at Bathurst. And the field compressing here, right at the top of the mountain. Some three and a half kilometres that way up on top there. That's where the incident happened just a few moments ago. Alex Webster, that gravel trap is very deep. That is very deep. That's going to take uh, a good, decent tow truck to get that out of there, I'm sure. John the Collier, it is the South Australian, the Datsun 240Z. 
So this might tell us what happened from the wall cam. There was a pass attempted that didn't go off too well, and that was the end result. Yeah, that's a shame. It's uh, Look, Hugh certainly races hard in his alpha. Uh, John, as we said, uh, is one of our newer members, but uh, that's a shame to see those two in a place that is obviously really high speed. The cars are a bit unloaded on the left side coming through. And uh, that's not what we like to see, but hopefully no car-to-car -car contact, it seems. It might have been that uh, it just been a bit of racing room. The Collier sure. giving a thumbs up here to the officials and for the 79 to get away there, Hugh Harrison. That's a blind approach there too, so you have been thinking, I need to move this car because you do arrive there at a rapid pace as the officials retrieve the 56 from the top. And Chad Nalon buried amongst the thousands of fans that are down in the paddock today. Yeah, if there's one person here that I would love to get the autograph of, it's around in the Group S. I'm going to say a big shout out to the officials, the volunteers. There's quite a few that man this event, and they have been busy yesterday, more so today as the pressure builds to the Repco Bathurst 12 hour. Yeah, look, without the amazing officials sitting out there in the flag post like these guys, we wouldn't be able to race, and we can't thank them enough. The weather can be hot, it can be cold, anything in between, and they're out there all day. So uh, big thanks to every single one of them. And most will be here for next weekend's Repco Supercars Championship opener as part of Bathurst Superfest. Many are going to stay here during the week and be part of it. Never knock back an opportunity to come to Mount Panorama. It really is a special place. When was your first time? Uh, it would have been back in 2018 when we were first at the uh, uh, here, and I've never been more intimidated, even though you can do many laps on a simulator, it never replaces the real thing. So just the actual reverberation of the sounds of the car coming back into you is a bit disorientating. And, uh, but once you get into it, you actually feel the flow of the car. I remember Jeff Morgan telling me, just follow the ripple strips, you know, because a lot of the corners are blind. And that was great advice. You can see there, Del Colo, you can see that rear wheel not really pointing in the right direction there. So that uh, would be contact then between him and the other whether car. Whether that was the wall or whether that was the car, not sure. Mm. Let's uh, let's wait till after the race and have Sit a Sit on the fence. <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> John Del Colo, the South Australian, back into it, but looking to park there. Not sure if that's going to be a safe spot where cars approach the top of Rock Skyline. Safety car continues to lead the field around and three minutes roughly left of this race today. Group S supporting the Repco Bathurst 12 hour. A gap that Terry Lawler had was out to four and a half seconds. He really did drive away from Jeff Morgan. Were you surprised by that? Look, I, I was, but I wasn't at the same time. Uh, Michael, who's Jeff's mechanic, said, look, you know, Jeff's getting a little bit older, maybe not as quick as he used to be, and Terry has got that car absolutely wound up and is driving it beautifully. So, look, to see them in the last race being as close as they were was great to see. So Jeff hasn't lost much, but I'm sure that Terry would have been mindful of that and said, I need to build a bit of a gap just to be sure, just in case anything happens. But that's all being eliminated. Now we're under safety car. And let's see if we do get a lap under green or if it's going to finish under safety car, which would be a shame. And Jeff, oh, there it is. They're going to wave the flag to finish this up. A fraction of it. It's going to take a bit of time to retrieve those cars. So Terry Lawler wins behind the back of the safety car here. It's a shame because it could have been building towards the end. Jeff Morgan will have to settle for second. But Lawler, he has been a class act all weekend. He sure has. Uh, well done to Terry. He's presented the car, as you'd expect, and he's had two race wins and a second, so he'd go home very happy. Um, we'll give him a couple of trophies after, after the race, and he can go home very proud of his efforts over the weekend. So Barber finishing in third. That'll be his best result of the weekend in the 911 Porsche, that martini livery behind him. Terry Lawler wins, though, behind the safety car. At the end of race number three, Andrew Purvis back in fourth spot. Wayne Potts will have to celebrate fifth on his 40th birthday. David Kaneen back in sixth. Joe Collegia seventh. That was a good battle brewing too. Spencer Rice, Michael McElligot and Tom Wallstab in car three. James Calvert-Jones will be 11th today. Tony Karafalowski, great result for him in 12th. Yeah, that's great. Good recovery from Tony. Peter Boylan, great to see him. And big mover there for Richard East. He came up uh, really great to see after his scary moment in the previous uh, race going over Skyline. Down the field there to the Collio that would ultimately end this race with that incident at the top of the mountain in Group S.
And that is the man. My thanks to Alex Webster, Group S, supporting the Repco Bathurst 12-hour. Lawler winning the final one behind the safety car as we build up to the Pirelli pole shootout. Not too far away to set the grid for tomorrow's Repco Bathurst 12-hour. We are less than 23 minutes away from that. And we know...